Hello and welcome to Culture Shock. Yes. With Brent and Evan. What are we talking about today, Brent? So today we're talking about college entrance exams. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Now we all have had exams at some point in our life, or some of us may be looking forward to exams. <laughs> but in Japan, college entrance exams are a little different than they are in other parts of the world. How so? Well, a lot of businesses in Japan hire directly out of certain colleges. So Mitsubishi or Toyota will only look at certain colleges for um, employees. Hmm. This means that which college you get into kind of determines your future career. Ooh. So that, that choice of college it determines the rest of your life. Pretty much. And so Japan has developed these national exams that serve as sort of a universal re uh, report card that colleges use to determine if you can or can't get into that college. Ooh. Yeah, so there are these uh, very, very difficult entrance exams that you have to take, and your GPA in high school is mostly ignored. It's really the score you get on that exam that determines which university you can get into. Oh, no wonder it's such a serious issue in all these anime that I've seen. Right. They, they treat it much more heavily <laughs> than uh, any American exams that I've seen. Exactly. Um, and when we talk tough exams, these are really tough. Um, it's a two-day long process. Two days? Two days. There are 29 tests. 29 tests over two days? Ooh, yes. Wow. Uh, it's That's a testorama <laughs> there. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, and they cover everything from uh, different foreign languages to Japanese history, world history, sociology, ethics. Um, ethics, Geography. Yeah. It's, pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, in terms of the, the breadth of knowledge, but it means you have to learn lots and lots and lots of different things. Really tough. 29 exams. Now, how long are these exams? Are They, they can be um, up to 80 minutes is actually the longest I've seen. Uh, that's, so that's a lot of time. That's a long exam. Yeah, and there'll be um, short breaks between each one, and then you have to go back and take the next test and continue doing it over the course of, of two days. So really exhausting. Wow. Yeah. Uh, now, as a result of how difficult these, these exams are, I should also point out, they're only held once a year. Once a year. Once so a if, year you, if you make a mistake, you're sick that day, mm. next year, yep. good luck. Exactly. <laughs> good luck next year. Right. Uh, so it, it, it's, a, it's a really big deal. Mm. Um, and it's why a lot of students are encouraged to avoid any extracurricular activities during their senior year of high school or even junior year of high school while they're preparing for these exams. Mm. Um, even to the point of dating. They're, they're discouraged from dating during that year. I don't know if that would fly in the U.S., <laughs> but... Probably not. <laughs> but it's, it, you know, it's considered one of those things where, well, if you want to do well on that exam, maybe for a year you kind of put that stuff off. Wow, to delay dating for, for a year or two even, <laughs> yeah. that, that takes a lot of discipline. <laughs> it sure does. So what happens to these students that don't do well mm. on those exams? Uh, well, you spend a year as what's called a ronin. A ronin? Yes. Like, like the roving samurai without a master? Exactly, yes. <laughs> they, they use the exact same term uh, because you are you have this year where you're trying to sort of get back on your feet, mm. if you will. Um, a second chance to take the exam and get into Tokyo U. <laughs> yes, right, totally. Uh, or, the, or these other ones. Um, <laughs> Now, it's actually quite common to be a Ronin. So um, each year, about 40% of college freshmen were Ronin the year before. Hmm. So a 40%? Lot of, 40%. So a lot of folks don't, uh, don't get a, a great score that first time around hmm. and have to spend some time going, uh, uh, going around. And that means they go to, most of them go to what's called a Yobiko, Yobiko. which is an entrance exam uh, uh, cram school basically. Mm, you go to this school for, for a year specifically to, to, to teach you how to get, do better on that test. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, the difficulty thing, difficult thing there, though, is that you're no longer in regular school. Mm. Um, so you're out of school. We have to go to this cram school and you have to often support yourself yeah. during that time to get the, the good grades to get mm. back in. Um, so it, it is a kind of an awkward time for people. Yeah, and I suppose with the new freedom of being out of school, it's a lot harder to focus on studies, <laughs> especially if you've already deferred yourself from yeah. participating in things that you wanted to. Mm -hmm. But then again, if it's setting up your future for the rest of your life, yeah. it may be worth it. Sure. Wow. Um, and, you know, you want to get into the best place you can. And, and again, um, the other complexity is that if you want to get into, say, a certain 
uh, company that's uh, big into engineering, mm. you have to get into a, into a certain university. So it's not just a matter of getting into a good university, it's getting into a university that will get you on the right um, kind of career path. So if I, if I want to study a particular discipline, I look through all the schools and I say, oh, this is the school I want. Mm. So now I need to study these exams because that school has an emphasis on right. those exams. And, and that gets to the even further thing is that each university has its own exam as well. As well? Yes. On top of <laughs> all this studying? Right. So you get into your own colleges or universities get through that exam to be able to get to that. So one's sort of a general aptitude and the other is a specific mm -hmm. for, well, yeah. if we want you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and you also have, you have art colleges mm -hmm. and you have engineering colleges, things like that. So they want those specific questions answered. Wow. Um, now, you mentioned earlier anime. There are uh, a fair number of anime mm -hmm. series where you see this happening. Um, Love Hina, oh, the yes. big ones. So <laughs> both Kitaru and Naru in those are Ronin, uh, studying for that. <laughs> Um, uh, Minato in Sekirei is mm -hmm. also uh, in that. Uh, Mayuko of Nia Under 7 is in that. Mm -hmm. Nia Under 7 is a good example because it, the main character is a Ronin who is working multiple jobs trying to pay for the cram school. Uh, exactly. Um, do you really want to see the life of kind of that, that poor, not even college student, but almost college student? Uh, I will get there. I will get there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and also, uh, going back even further, uh, Godai and Maison Koku. Uh, which is an anime from the 70s. Uh, he's a Ronin as well. And is a good example of someone who's trying to, you know, get a place to stay and do all that stuff in that, that time period. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's pretty difficult. Yeah. Hmm. I, I seem to also remember one guy on Shin-Chan, a neighbor ah. who never seemed to succeed in getting in, <laughs> but he, he was too preoccupied with other stuff, and they tried to encourage him. Mm -hmm. Of course, if he did get in, he'd move away probably and wouldn't be the obnoxious neighbor that he was. But uh, yeah. uh, what, can one, what can one do? Right, exactly. <laughs> well, you try again. How, how many times can a person try? That's a good question. I believe you can try as often as you like, hmm. um, but it's going to get harder and harder as you get older. Um, hmm. you know, you're going to need to find some, you know, you, it's going to need to happen at some point. Are there many students who return? Uh, I, I know... Here in the U.S., sometimes we'll have returning students who've been on the workforce for a little while. Right. But it seems like that career path is Doesn't not as common. Yeah, not quite as often in Japan. Um, and one of the advantages um, uh, to their system is that you have more lifetime employment. Mm -hmm. So once you get into a company, you're going to stay there for 30 years. They're going to wow. find something for you to do. Now, that's, that's, that's very different from what I've heard with the U.S., <laughs> where people average maybe six careers yeah. uh, in their lifetime, which seems a lot, but... Potentially. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, wow. Now, the, the other side of that coin, too, is that within a company, you may do different things. Mm -hmm. So they may shift you to th this area, that area, depending on your aptitude or what, what needs to be done. Um, so you can have kind of that within a particular company, um, but you can stay there usually. You can stay there as long as you want. So you can start out with some skills and then move into the management position and mm -hmm. as the company grows. And yeah. Exactly. So, so with all these exams, what, how many subjects? I mean, mm. do they subcategorize these subjects, uh, sciences or yeah. languages? So you, you'll get basically. So that there are are six overall um, uh, subjects. There's culture. There's history slash geography. Hmm. Um, there's Japanese literature, uh, foreign languages, science, and mathematics. Wow. Yeah, and then uh, mathematics is divided up into. Regular mathematics, um, uh, let's see here, um, accounting, things along mm -hmm. those lines. Um, actually, like IT and technology is part of mathematics because it's one of those weird things. Mm -hmm. um, science gets into chemistry and physics. Um, so it does kind of subdivide up uh, within that. Wow. To spend that much time in an exam room. <laughs> are these, uh, the, are, are these the, similar to the exam rooms that we see on some of these shows? The lecture hall, yes. you have your... Pencil, you have your timer, your sheet, your in ID. Fact, uh, we saw in Boogie Pop Phantom yeah. uh, the characters. They were taking college entr entrance exams. That's so it's exactly that. Um, yeah, it, it's a, in fact, you'll actually go to, essentially, you will go to a college to take the exam, um, but you're, you're just there to take the test. Uh, so everybody travels to these centers, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like what we do with the SET. Yes, or... exactly. And there are, let me see here, um, back in 2014, there were um, about 700 different centers um, uh, where these tests were, were, were held um, uh, over the course of January, two days in January, with uh, just over half a million students. Wow. 
taking those tests. Oh my goodness. I bet everybody's just waiting for their results to come mm, out. And absolutely. Are, are those are those the kind of things that are posted publicly or are they mailed? Um, I to believe the they're actually mailed back to students. So um, yeah. So, th so they can then turn them into the schools that uh, hey uh, <laughs> I got a good exam. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, um, yeah, so um, uh, yeah, you get those back, and then you find out how it goes, and you go from there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is this is fascinating. <laughs> um, if you've enjoyed this uh, discussion, uh, please join us for some of the other culture talk, uh, culture shock talks that we have. <laughs> and uh, where would you go to find that? Well, uh, I would go to geekspectrum.org mm -hmm. or our new and improved site. Ooh. Our Geek Archaeologist. Yes. Dot com. Nice. <laughs> Gotta have the dot com. Exactly. There we are. Geek Archaeologist. Mm -hmm. Dot com. Mm -hmm. See you there.